Hey, it's Baking with the Bolliers here again. We're doing a French bread recipe today. It's a really quick recipe that we found that we made out of a super, super complicated one. I love French bread and I used to stop at the grocery store all the time on my way home from work and I would buy a loaf of bread and I would bring home a block of cheese and sometimes that is all we would have for dinner because I am a bread lover. So a while back, uh, the bread at the grocery store just started tasting really gross and I really like homemade bread. So I looked up a recipe for French bread and it was super complicated. Um, this one, we decided to make it a little simpler and less intimidating. So I'm gonna start out with two cups of warm water and then I'm gonna add half a cup of room temperature water. The only reason I'm doing that is because my measuring cup holds two cups and when I have the water warm enough, the half a cup of room temperature water doesn't really make much of a difference. So we've got our two cups of water and calls for a two tablespoons of yeast. Yes, it is a lot of yeast. This also makes a lot of bread. It makes a couple of big, nice and airy loaves of French bread. Uh, like I said, you know, the grocery store bread just isn't as good as it used to be. They don't bake it in house anymore a lot of times, or if they do, the dough has so many stabilizers and conditioners in it, and it just doesn't have that nice pure taste. Um, so I found this recipe for French bread and it called for you stopping every 10 minutes for an hour and kneading the bread. So the first time I made it, I was like, okay, we'll do that. But if you have little kids, all of a sudden an hour's gone by and you haven't kneaded your bread. <laughs> so I decided to just see what would happen if we made it without kneading it every 10 minutes and it came out fine. So this is our version of French bread. So I've got our two tablespoons of yeast and our two and a half cups of water in here. And we're letting the yeast kind of dissolve and break up a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and put in, uh, what do we got here? Three tablespoons of sugar. And that gives the yeast a little something extra to eat. Like I said, this is a really nice light and airy bread. Uh, then we're gonna put in a tablespoon of salt. And then we need six cups of flour. Like I said, it makes a lot of bread. But if you are like we are and you love bread as much as we do, that's not a problem. Uh, the other thing I like to do with this bread is I will age it like we uh, do our pizza dough sometimes. So what we're going to do tonight is we're actually going to bake off one loaf for dinner tonight. And then we're going to throw the other half of the dough in the fridge to bake it off in a day or two. I like the flavor um, that develops in the dough when it sits in the fridge for a couple of days. And since there is a lot of yeast in this recipe, you really don't lose any of that rise by putting it in for the slow ferment. In fact, I have, haven't noticed losing any rise when you do a nice slow ferment, because we've been doing, of course, a lot of sourdough, like a lot of other people did um, in quarantine, but we've been doing sourdough breads for years. So let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my three cups of flour. And of course, we're gonna have the recipe on our blog for our easy sourdough, or we'll do sourdough another day. I'm thinking I've got sourdough on the brain for our easy French bread. All right, that's four. And I'm only gonna put five cups of flour in to start. And we're gonna get that mixing up. And before I turn on the mixer, we're gonna put in our five tablespoons of oil. I don't like to put it on at first with the yeast or the sugar. I like to put it on before I turn on the mixer. Just a personal preference. I feel like it mixes in a little bit better and doesn't leave as much of an oil slick or clumpiness with the flour when you put it in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and give this a spin and we're gonna come back and put our other cup of flour in. Okay, so I've got my sixth cup of flour I'm getting ready to put in. I always kind of adjust it. Usually it does take the full six cups, but it's always best to look because you want this dough to be a bit of a sticky dough because you wanna have that nice, it's not like a chewy, thick, crusty bread, but it has that nice, fine, almost like flaky crust to it. Um, I think that comes from the olive oil and like I said, it being a wetter dough. So when I add in the sixth cup of flour, I'll add it in slowly just to kind of make sure that it's not getting too dry. 
Um, then we're gonna let this go ahead and knead for five to seven minutes. And then we'll come back and show you what it looks like when we divide it up for our loaves. Okay, so our dough has been kneading away in here. And I actually didn't use the full six cups of uh, flour this time. It's really, really dry right now here. Um, so it's winter. We didn't need, uh, the, the flour just absorbed all the water. So like I said, we've got kind of, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of a sticky dough. So it kind of sticks to your fingers. So it's a little, you know, tricky to work with sometimes, but usually after it sits for about an hour or so, the flour is going to absorb more of the liquid. So we don't want it to be too dry before we set it to proof. So if I want to be, you know, super fancy and precise, I will get out my um, electric scale, my little uh, digital scale, I mean, to see, you know, divide the dough in half and make sure it's divided equally. But I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling it today. So we're just going to eyeball it. Um, but like I said, by all means, if you want to divide your dough in perfectly in half, feel free. All right. So I'm just going to try to get as much of this dough out as I can. And you're going to get your hands dirty. There's just no way around it. I've got my bowl that we're going to proof the bread that we're going to make tonight in. And so I'm going to take about half of this dough out and try to pinch it off and stick it in here. I think we're gonna make some garlic bread hoagies tonight with Italian sausage and peppers and onions with this bread. I'm excited. I'm excited about bread. <laughs> and then for the bread dough that we're going to put in the fridge and let it sit for a couple days before we make it, I'm gonna take my dough covered mitts and get the rest of the dough out of the bowl here. And I'm going to stick it in this bag. The nice thing about bread is everybody's very intimidated by it and they're nervous that they're going to get it wrong. And it's actually pretty forgiving. Um, if I decide when I go to work with this later, I feel like it's just too sticky, you can always knead a little flour into it before you shape it. Um, but it's harder to take the flour out. And it's harder to add water back into it. You can but it always makes a huge mess. So I would rather have my dough a little on the sticky side than I would on the dried out side. So like I said, I've got my bag of dough that's gonna go in the fridge for another day. And I've got my container of dough that we're gonna put a little lid on. It's gonna do its thing, double in bulk. And in about an hour, we're gonna come back and shape it and get it ready to go in the oven. Okay, so you can see our bread has risen nicely looking good, ready to go. So now we're going to uh, get it shaped for our loaf. You don't need one of these pans for French bread. Um, you can definitely take a silicone baking mat or some parchment paper and create like a little well. Um, what I used to do is I would roll up some aluminum foil like in tubes and have it on either side and then put the bread kind of in between. But I will admit that this makes things a lot nicer. It just makes a nicer shaped loaf. Uh, this actually belonged to my aunt. So I think about her every time I make the bread. All right, so I'm going to put a little flour down because like I said, this is a really sticky dough um, and we just don't want it to stick to the counter. I've seen people who are able to manipulate the dough with bench scrapers and they can take the stickiest dough that I have ever seen and turn it into these beautiful loaves. I don't have that skill. Uh, maybe someday, but not right now. So, and again, I, I, I want this to be less intimidating for people. And when I see these people working the bench scrapers like they're an extension of their arms and folding this dough, I'm like, Ugh. so like I said, we're just not that way. We're a little, little less fussy. So I kind of pull it out into like a, a loaf shape. Um, I don't want to mess with it too much before I start to form it because when you really work dough, the gluten bonds kind of come together and it makes it harder to work with. So if I were to like punch down that dough, like I don't know if anybody watched cooking shows like in the late 80s, early 90s, and they would punch down the dough and all it does is make it harder to work with because then that gluten kind of binds together 
and you have to let the dough rest. If you've ever made pasta, you understand what I mean. So, like I said, I let it rest. Just kind of pull it out here into about the length we're looking for. And I want it to be uh, you know, a little shorter in the pan so it doesn't come over, but nine times out of 10, I don't accomplish that and it does come over a little bit. So, and then we're gonna take it and we're gonna pull it and we're gonna fold it over so it makes more of a nice, smooth loaf. Now, we're just looking for evenness here. We want it to be about the same thickness throughout the entire log of dough um, so that it doesn't bake up like one end all like with a weird bulb over here. So I've got my dough shaped and again I just don't mess with it that much. It's really wet dough and it's harder to work with and it might look ugly right now but I assure you once it bakes it's going to be beautiful. So we're going to throw a towel over this and we're going to let it rise for about 45 minutes to an hour and then we'll come back when we're uh, ready to put it in the oven. Okay, our bread has risen nicely. It looks nice and even. Um, now, if you wanted to score it or do anything fancy with it, you could. I'm just gonna put it in the oven. So we're gonna put it in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes until it's nice and golden brown, and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so our bread came out of the oven a little bit ago. We were busy having a nerf battle in the backyard, so we didn't film uh, when it first came out of the oven, but as you can see, nice and golden brown and delicious. So we're gonna have the recipe up on the blog for our easy French bread and have a good day.